What's the last thing you bought? I recently had to replace my makeup remover, and on my way to the store, I couldn't help but notice the overwhelming amount of products, clothes, ads, and marketing gimmicks that were constantly in my face. While looking at the fancy window displays, I couldn't help but think about the messages these companies were sending us. Telling us to curate our homes with the newest design trend, to revamp our style with new outfits, to buy skincare that's supposed to fix all of our problems. Of course, implying that having these things will somehow make us happier, or at least create the illusion of happiness. But really, who benefits from this? And what's the end goal of trying to achieve this perfectly curated, materialistic life? I've learned that we can't always control what goes on around us, but we can shift our mindset and priorities away from the excessive focus on material things. Today, I wanted to talk about some things that have really helped me to avoid the materialism trap and to live my life in simplicity and in peace. Two years ago, I challenged myself to do a low buy year. And let me tell you, it was one of the most eye-opening experiences. The reason I wanted to do this in the first place was because I needed to pay off a big debt and to prove to myself that I could do it. So I set some ground rules to become more mindful of my spending and work towards my financial goals. Was I able to pay off all that debt? Not exactly but I was surprised at how I was able to look past all the distractions and guide my finances in the right way. It was one of the best ways to reset my shopping habit that had been spiraling out of control, and I was able to redefine my relationship with money. I'm no longer calling it a challenge, but now it's become more of a lifestyle. I don't buy or browse until something needs to be replaced, I always use a wish list so I don't make impulse purchases and I try to shop the secondhand market first. For me, setting these guidelines work way better than budgeting because I don't feel restricted but encouraged to spend more mindfully. Because let's be honest, even the most extreme minimalist needs to buy things to function and thrive. So instead of talking about how to not shop, I think it's way more important to shed light on how we can shop more intentionally. If you feel overwhelmed with your expenses or always have too many things in your cart or your wish list, I highly recommend doing this low buy challenge or budgeting, cash only challenge, setting credit card limits, no buy challenge, whatever works for you in this season of your life. Sometimes we need these resets to evaluate our habits and start over. Did you know that the average American sees around 4,000 to 10,000 ads each day? I think most of us have become so used to it that we don't even notice it anymore. That doesn't mean that we are not exposed to it all the time. Every time we scroll on our phones, watch a movie, step outside of our houses. And now the algorithm picks up on our interests and personalizes the ads for us. No wonder we feel so tempted to splurge on things that we don't even need. It honestly feels like too much, more than ever lately, especially when it comes to clothes, skincare, and makeup, because I guess I am the target audience for this market. And don't get me wrong, I actually love getting dolled up and creating different looks with my outfits, but I needed to find a way to simplify these areas of my life and not feel so tempted to fall into the materialism trap. So for skincare and makeup, after too many oxidized vitamin C serums and half used expired creams later, I learned my lesson. Now I just keep it to a three-step skincare routine. And for everyday makeup, I keep it in this clear container so that I can actually see what I have and don't buy duplicates until I'm done with a product. When I went to primary school, we had to wear our school uniforms and I was only able to wear my fun clothes on the weekends. I hated it at the time, but now I've modeled my wardrobe after this concept. 
On my regular days, I have my go-to outfits, my uniform, and this is what you will see me in 80% of the time. And this is what makes up 80% of my closet. It doesn't have to be boring, and it doesn't have to be all basics. The point is to have a handful of outfit ideas that you absolutely love. Since doing this, I never feel like I don't have anything to wear, and I'm less tempted to shop around for random pieces. What are you most tempted to buy? I highly recommend spending a day or two to try to figure out a simple system that works for you. And once you have a system in place, you'll be surprised at how peaceful it feels to go on about your day to ignore all the ads and messages that are constantly being thrown in your face. When I first started on this minimalism journey, I started asking myself, where does this constant craving come from? What am I trying to fill? What am I trying to prove? And as embarrassing as it is to admit this, I was shopping to define my self-worth and prove to others that I was somehow valuable by decorating my life with these things. I often talk about how important it was for me to know my enough, knowing when I have enough things and when I have enough money. Because without recognizing this guideline, it's way too easy to get caught up in the rat race, to overwork ourselves, to indulge in frivolous things, and crave what we don't need. And now I'm realizing how important it is to know that without adding anything more to my life, that I am enough. I don't need that thing to be whole, valued, or loved. This is such a powerful statement that always puts me in a state of gratitude and peace. As the saying goes, gratitude turns what we have into enough. I'll actually say this to myself out loud whenever I feel tempted by some clever ad. And ironically, this mindset brings me more abundance and fulfillment than anything ever can. So maybe I can remind you that you don't need that outfit to be seen. You don't need that expensive facial, designer bag, the cool car, the house, the vacation to be valued. In a culture that constantly tells us we're not enough, it feels so powerful to not let that narrative become our internal narrative. It feels so good to say, I have enough and I am enough. Not just me, but all of us, because our inherent worth cannot be bought or priced. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll talk to you in the next video. Take care guys.